Revelio. Hello. Um, Hufflepuff Hall is here. I'm sorry if I jump scared you. Um, this these videos are not really they don't really have com they don't have commentary at all. But this is one of the several treasure hunting videos that I'll be doing and they are kind of long because I'm pretty much exploring everywhere. <laughs> so I thought I would use these videos to just kind of provide the commentary that I didn't really give in the other videos. I kind of prefer it this way, honestly, because, like, I don't really want to do commentary for every video. So here I am at the Kuro, I, I believe this was the Kuro, Kuro Ruins. A uh, really cool place. I might want to I think before I get started on talking on, about other things, I think I want to watch this bit. <laughs> little moon calf. Um. Yeah, in case you guys don't know, um, this this area this is actually secrets. based off of the Hagrid's Forbidden Journey ride. Um, I'll point it out in a second. I, I know I get really excited when I finally see it. <laughs> but at Universal Orlando, there's this amazing ride where you you sit in Hagrid's bike and you go around these exact ruins. And it is honestly the coolest ride I think I've ever been on. <laughs> Um, I was able to go during a time when the when the wait was only like an hour and a half, and honestly, it was definitely worth the wait for for it. Yeah, up there. Yeah, there's there's a there's a part of the queue. <laughs> it's like oh, it's like that. Perhaps not the best place to be caught um, alone. Also, I really love this outfit. This is one of my favorite jackets in the game. And I think... Is that the Chinese Firebolt... Ooh, like, purple... Scarf? I don't remember. Yeah, I, I guess this is also a good opportunity to talk about the, um... Create creating characters actually <laughs> to actually be on task <laughs> of what I wanted to do. Uh, yeah, so creating characters is not that bad in this game. Uh, there's definitely a lot of opportunities or, or a lot of variations when it comes to like the hair, the skin, um, colors and details. It's not like, it's not extremely in depth, like it's not like cyberpunk, <laughs> and it doesn't have to be. I think there's just enough in here to create your ideal character for the Hogwarts Legacy. Uh, with Rudel Waslib, I really wanted to make someone that looked very unique. I mean, obviously because Rudel Waslib is a play on or is a inside joke relating to Ron Weasley. Of course, my Runal Waslip had to have red hair, which they do. Um, but I also wanted some very unique uh, characteristics that I normally wouldn't use. Um, I believe I gave Runal freckles, <laughs> which look really nice with their skin tone. Um, yeah, I, I, I was kind of going for like, the wizards win. oh wait, I'm looking for the, <laughs> hold on, <laughs> I think right here, <gasps> this is part of the line, I think in the, when you write the line, the blasted and scroots are kind of like scurrying on this part, but there's like 
It's kind of like a tent though. I'm trying to find where the, the line is. <laughs> where that iconic part of the, um, the iconic part of the queue is. Like, I just want to see it. I remember I went to Universal after they said, oh yeah, this little area from Universal, it's it's going to be a spot you can find in Hogwarts Legacy. So when I went to, when I did this ride and I waited in the line, I was like, oh my god, I gotta take it all in. There it is, right there. That thing right there. That little shrine. Bam, yep. How nice of you to stop by. Get away with that. Easy. Yeah, that, I think that is the Chinese firebolt. Ooh, scarf. My favorite scarf. <laughs> Revenia. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Hagrid. <laughs> Oh my gosh, that's so cool. If you waited in line to ride Hagrid's Forbidden Journey, you've seen this, so hopefully you're Goodness. as excited as I am. All right, so back to back to creating Runel. Um, I did try and go for like a non-binary kind of person. Um, I mean. I mean, that was what I was going for. <laughs> but I was just... I was just doing whatever. I think it, I think it worked out, though. Even if I pulled it off, like, either way, I think Bruno is, was really fun to, uh to dress. <laughs> I... Because Runa Waslib is, is such a... Like, it's, it's an inside joke, right? So, Runa Waslib as a character, I, I really wanted to make sure that they had a goofy appearance. <laughs> Which was really hard to do sometimes because, like, I, I put them in that Gryffindor jacket and, and the fedora. I mean, how... Like, at, at those points, it was really hard to make Rudol look ridiculous. Anyways, so when you create your character, you start your journey. And I will say that the first cutscene is... Really? You know what? It was... It was really exciting, the whole dragon thing. Um, wow, yeah, that really, that was really cool. I think the moment where that guy got eaten and then all of a sudden you see the Thestrals right there, that was really, that was really cool. Um, I think the music that plays in that scene really reminded me of Fantastic Beasts. I, really a lot of this music of this the, a lot of music in this game this like, like trouble either feels like 
Harry Potter or Fantastic Beasts, or it's kind of doing its own thing. But uh, yeah, the music in this game is so great. There are definitely songs in here, like they try and like they try to make it similar to music from the films, and that's that's fine. <laughs> I think it works. Hmm. This is when I go into the coral ruins, but then at some point I'm like, oh wait, this is. Like, I didn't realize that these dungeons were... I think all of them have missions tied to them, and I didn't know that going in. I just wanted the treasure. <laughs> so this is the only dungeon I try and go in during exploration. Um, I mean, I practice fighting, so... Yeah, so going back to the first miss mission. Uh, I'm trying to remember what happens. So... Yeah, that was a fine tutorial. I think going to that little island, I think it ended up being Percival Rackham's old house or island or whatever. That was fun. Uh, we love Professor Pig. <laughs> there, I, I do remember when I first played it, I did find that little easter egg of of Pickett and what's his name, Teddy the Niffler from Fantastic Beasts, and I was really happy about that. <laughs> I am, I am a fan of Fantastic Beasts, guys. I'm sorry. I know I'm not supposed to be, but I am. Um, I am a Hufflepuff. Newt Scamander is my hero, so I am a fan, <laughs> and I am one of the few people in the world that probably wanted to see more <laughs> than what we got right now. <laughs> one less follower, Ranrock. I at least wanted to see Newt and Tina get married. I mean, was that really hard to ask? She wasn't even in the last movie. I'm gonna stop before I start ranting. But yeah, from that island, you end up going to Gringotts, and that was really cool. Like, it was only a section, and you only were able to do it, like, once, but it was... It was good enough for me. It's kind of like the, uh... Like, the Azkaban section that you can do when you're Hufflepuff. Like, it's only just a little piece, but it went a long way. <laughs> I definitely, it took, it took me a little bit to get used to, um, like I didn't know how to stupefy right away, but now that I know how to do it, it's one of my favorite, <laughs> it's one of my favorite features. So, going on to the start of the story, like, you meet, I believe you just meet, you meet Rangrock at Gringotts, and you don't meet Rookwood until Hogsmeade, right? So, I mean, they're, they're good villains, I guess. <laughs> I, I'm really not... Like, the story ends up being good, but at the end of the day, the story bits are not why I'm playing the game. <laughs> so I feel kind of neutral. Ooh! <gasps> okay, that Glacier Blast, like, that's pretty cool when you it actually works, when there's actually people around to get hurt by it. <laughs> that was really cool. <laughs> Anyways! Um, yeah, I'm pretty neutral about the villains. I, I do like Rookwood though. I, I like his voice actor and I like his design. It's kind of cool. I'd cosplay as him. 
<laughs> but yeah. So when you you see that first memory, okay, cool. You meet Renrock, got dramatic, but then you portal into the middle of the woods. And this is one of my favorite parts of the game, okay? When you you end up somewhere and you and Fig are like, OMG, where are we? And then Professor Fig is like, oh my gosh, we're at Hogwarts. We got a we got a sorting ceremony to go to. And then you get the whole you fly over the, the view flies over Hogsmeade Station, and then we get the Hogwarts reveal. The main theme plays and Hogwarts at night is just beautiful. Like I cry. I've I've done this I've I've played that part through four times. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> which I'm sure you, you know, because I've, I've had, I did the jackdaw thing with all four houses and I put them in videos for you, so, you know, I played <laughs> the intro bit four times and I'll tell you, I got emotional every time. Like, that was, that was really well done. It was well done. And it, it really really hit me in the Harry Potter feels, you know? <sighs> so good. And then you enter the Great Hall and you get sorted. Uh, it, I think it's really cool that you can connect your... your Pottermore... I, I'm still calling it Pottermore. <laughs> um, you can connect your Pottermore account and be sorted by actually taking the sorting hat quiz, which is really cool. Uh, but I also think it's nice that they let you choose. So yeah, I would hate to just be tied down to one house. I mean, I love being a Hufflepuff and I loved seeing the common room for the first time. But it, it's also cool to look at the other ones because Slytherins have the best common room. I'm putting it out there. And I wanted to explore that. <laughs> Who wouldn't? It's so cool. I think this is when I realized I should probably come back when I do an actual story thing. <laughs> Um, yeah, so after you get sorted, you have the opportunity to explore your common room, which is always awesome. Um, I did explore all four of them and I made a video on that. You can check my channel for that. It's somewhere. <laughs> uh, I don't think I'll remember to leave an information card here. <laughs> So, check out my pl I think it's- I'm pretty sure it's on the Waslib Guides playlist, so check it out there. Um, you meet some of your- some of the NPCs that share the same house as you. Mm, I really love- you- Slither- when you're Slytherin, you, you can meet Sebastian and Amon- you meet- you have to meet. Sebastian and Ominous right away and those are probably the two the two best characters of the game <laughs> So that's always exciting and I think as a Hufflepuff You don't meet Poppy yet, but like I remember seeing her sitting on the floor <laughs> so <laughs> She's there Um. <laughs> uh... And then you go to Professor Weasley and she introduces you the on here, I wonder. the field guide hmm. Not the and field guide pages. Student. <laughs> I mean, how long does it take us to find all of those? <laughs> yeah, that was my one last look 
one last moment of appreciation for Hagrid's forbidden journey before I go find more treasures. And yes, as you can see, I did do all of the landing platforms at this point. I wanted to get them over with. Um, some of them are kind of easy to find, especially like in the coast. But some of them are just kind of like it, like on on a mountain, and they're not really obvious. And they don't show on the map, so I don't feel bad using a guide to find them all. I mean, there's only 20. It won't take long. You know, that's actually a good opportunity to bring up the collectible system because Professor Weasley introduces you to a collectible such as uh, field guide pages. Um, I think... I think the point of getting the collectibles is to complete the challenges to get uh, rewards. Which is cool. Um, I think sometimes I kind of wish. Well, no, never mind. You know, like when you're out in the world, the field guide pages are marked on the map, but only in the world. Uh, I don't think it would be possible for them to be shown on the Hogwarts map. <laughs> I don't think any of them, any of them, anything can be shown on the Hogwarts map. But the Hogsmeade map, at least, we could have used something. I think at this point in time, I'm still missing two pages in Hogsmeade, and I do not know where they are. Look, I'm gonna have to use a complete guide, which I thought I'd... I, referenced already. I thought I did that already, but I guess I didn't. Um, I'm gonna have to follow one and watch my video. Ew. Yeah, I'm gonna have to like really have to figure it out. It's so annoying when you're like, like you've spent all this time collecting and you're down to two and you have no idea where to look. And I say that I used a guide to find Hogsmeade pages, and I didn't- I still didn't get all of them, so that's even more annoying. <laughs> I was literally trying to avoid that. <laughs> so... Going back to the first day of Hogwarts, uh, yeah, I think it really had a lot of promise. <laughs> like, it's really exciting to go to your first class, learn your first drill spells, or whatever, um, you interact with Sebastian <gasps> and, and Natty. And that's fun. That's awesome. I just kind of wish every class was like that. Like, instead of, like, assignments from the professors, you just have to go to class again. And then, like, the montages that we get for, like, the other classes are cool, but I kind of wish there was just a bit more interaction. I wish that classes had more importance. I really don't like the assignments. I don't like I don't like that system. I think the only good thing about it though is that you can I think in the fall you can pretty much do all but two 
or three. You can do most of the assignments in the fall, and you can get most of the spells in the fall that way as well. Which I like, but I just... I don't care about learning spells, I just wish that there were more interactive class segments than what we ended up getting. But I... I... You know what, I think because I like the professors, it makes- that makes me even more upset because I think all the professors are really cool. I mean, we all- we all have a, a crush on Professor Garlic. Rebellion. <sighs> Maybe that's something they'll do- I mean, the game was a real success, surprisingly. You know, cancel culture, try to stop it. <laughs> but it ended up being a massive success at the beginning of the year. Um, I don't know how well it did overall. You know, Tears of the Kingdom came out this year. I feel like that knocked it out, knocked this game out of the... Like, everyone forgot about Hogwarts Legacy once Tears of the Kingdom came out. <laughs> Which, well deserved. That was a phenomenal game. Really good sequel to Breath of the Wild, really. I mean, they copied and pasted, and then they added three times as much than what was in Breath of the Wild, and it really, it blows my mind. And you know what? If Hogwarts Legacy gets a sequel, I feel like they might do something similar. Because there's a lot of good in this nice. game, but also a lot of flaws that could be worked on. And I feel like, I feel like the developers learned a lot So, if they do move on with a sequel, I'm curious to see what what it is like. But until then, we have this one, <laughs> which I'm fine with. I'm perfectly fine with this game. After your first classes, you finally go to Hogsmeade, which, other than Hogwarts, it was the thing, the place I was most, most excited to go. <laughs> you get to choose between whether you want to go with Natty or Sebastian, and I don't think it really matters. <laughs> um... I think with my Rebellion. with my Gryffindor and my Rav my Ravenclaw, I think I went with Natty, and then my Hufflepuffs and Sl my Hufflepuff and Slytherin went with Sebastian, so I I split it. <laughs> I mean, I'm with a lot of the fan base. I mean, the Hogwarts Legacy fan base specifically. I think we're all. Most of us have a very toxic relationship with Sebastian. <laughs> we love him. <laughs> like, we're just into those bad boys, I guess. But Natty's also really cool. Rebellion. I'll probably talk about her in a bit. But yeah, you go to Hog Hogsmeade. A wand chooses you. Again, going back to Pottermore, if you take the wand quiz and you connect your Pottermore account, you can get the wand that you you got when you did the test. So that was really cool. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna confess something really nerdy. Are you ready? Um, 
So... <laughs> There's a version... Somewhere on the internet, people made the Sorty Cat quiz and the wand quiz. But they... It's not like, like they remade it so that every question, you see every question and you can kind of like play with it, I guess. But basically what I did is I found the alternative wand quiz. And I took advantage of someone knowing the wand quiz algorithm. <laughs> and I took the wand quiz three different times and kind of role-played <laughs> as as runal and as what I thought my Ravenclaw and Slytherin would be like and that's how I ended up picking their wand details <laughs> yeah I'm not- I'm that kind of person to- uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna distract you from this revelation by saying, yes, there is a butterfly icon over there. I do end up doing the follow the butterflies quest later, and that's when I do all the butterflies around the world. Um... I did them separately just because they're their own little collection, although I do kind of recommend you doing it earlier than I do with Runal. Um, mostly because there's a lot of room of requirement furniture you can get from the butterfly chests. Because it's, they're collection chests and all collection chests are either furniture or uh, wand handles or um, upgrade uh, traits but I don't think the butterfly chests ever hold those traits I think it's just furniture and wand handles but I do get back to them so just ignore the butterflies <laughs> Continuing on the, um, my little Hogsmeade chat, uh, going through Zonkos and Hogsmeade is very satisfying because those are the most iconic locations and there's, there's a lot of, there's a, there's several fun interactions you can do at Zonkos and just walking around Honey Dukes is, like, I can smell it. <laughs> It makes me really happy walking in there. Uh, after the troll fight, you end up in the Three Broomsticks, who is owned by Serona, who is a trans character, which I think is really awesome because they're they're also it's a trans character voiced by a trans person, so that's really cool. I think that was. I think that was really intentional, honestly, because the the developers know the they know the tea, they know the drama that's going on, and they I think this was their little way of I don't know what their intention might have been, but this was their way of saying, hey, we're not we don't. And just because we're making a Harry Potter game does not mean we share the same views as the creator. Which is really... if that was their intention, I really appreciate it because... I think a lot of people don't... <laughs> there are a lot of people that don't think that. Like, they think if you are a Harry Potter fan, that means you agree with everything J.K. Rowling says, which is not true. 
so... Serona is definitely appreciated. And I think it's cool that... This game really does have a lot of representation. Mostly culturally. Uh, as far as LGBT, I think that Serona is the only one. But, uh, I mean, you can make arguments about <laughs> Sebastian and Ominous, but that's- I don't think that's canon. <laughs> that might be just head canon. <laughs> but culturally, there's a lot of- you get a lot of people from other countries. Like, you have, um, like Natty and Amit. I think like half of the professors are not from Britain. Like it's only- it's just a little bit more diverse than what we see in Harry Potter. Which is not- I mean, the UK is pretty white anyways. <laughs> so... I guess that's a reflection of the times, but it is still really cool to see other cultures represented. Even if it's just a few people. The white man. <laughs> Britain really is to blame of so many issues. <laughs> they tried to take over the world 500 years ago and we're still suffering. <laughs> but yeah, to just avoid any other political or related comments, Racism and transphobia and homophobia are stupid and a waste of time and energy. <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> There's no reason to get angry. Let people live their lives, you know? Live life the way you want. Don't give a crap about what other people say. That's, I mean, at least for me, I have enough stress as it is. I don't want to worry about what people think of me on top of it. <laughs> I really don't care. <laughs> I hate people anyways. Is that really anti-Hufflepuff of me? My soul- I'm, I'm just an introvert. My social meter is low. I don't have time. Or I don't want to give the time to people. Everyone should just be like me. <laughs> just ignore everyone. <sighs> I hate spiders. Honestly, the, the dug bogs are my least favorite thing to fight in this game. Spiders are not bad. <laughs> They were though at the beginning. I used to be really bad going against spiders. It's also scary. Honestly, once you get to level like 20 and you have pretty useful, like you've used your talent points a lot and you have... Like I'm basically OP at this point. I'm, I'm almost level 30. I have all the ancient magic slots. 
I have most of the spells. I think I'm only missing the Unforgivables at this point. And I use my talent points on really useful things. And I'm basically I'm just super overpowered. You plan to creep up on me, but it won't work. Not with me. I I think I end up changing the difficulty to hard, magic, I think. I'm not afraid of it. All I think I'm on easy right now. Maybe I change it to normal. I know my Slytherin playthrough is on hard. I think my Hufflepuff one is... I don't know what my Hufflepuff one is on. I'll probably change it. I don't need to play on easy anymore. I think I got... <laughs> I put so many hours into the game. I think I I get it. I know how things go. <laughs> I'm I'm a beast. <laughs> so after he get back to Hogsmeade, I definitely think the focus is Professor Hackett and the crossed wands challenge. I would definitely do all of those back to back. I think the the final round is available later, but yeah. No, do people want did people want more crossed wands rounds? I think the crossed wands rounds were more used as a tutorial. Because like look, this this is the real crossed wands right here. The real fight. And then you have the three uh Oh man, what are they called? Arenas. You take down all these camps and then you have the three arenas. So... I feel like I've seen a comment or two about crossed wands being a good multiplayer idea, but not really. I mean, there are a lot of things that people are like, oh, this would have been a really good multiplayer thing, but I honestly don't see how that would work for most of those ideas. <laughs> that might just be me, though. I'm not really big on multiplayer. I don't have a lot of friends. <laughs> so, and the friends I do have do not have this game anyways, so I don't really care. Multiplayer is not a big deal for me. Once you do crossed wands, you end up that's when the restricted the restricted section mission becomes unlocked. And that's that's a really fun <laughs> that's a fun quest. Uh you learn how oh man, disillusionment, right? Is that what that's what it's called? 
Um, you learn that. <laughs> and you... Wait, did you learn that? Oh no, okay, yeah, you learn disillusionment with Sebastian, and then you learn about sneak attacks with Professor Fig later. So that's cool. That's a cool part of the game. Um, however, I don't use stealth as much as I... Like, I feel like I go out of my way to use stealth here, just because at some point you're just too powerful. Like, you don't need to stealth. <laughs> Honestly. Ah, oh, what a good view. You love to see it. This is what you want to see. This is why I play the game. That's amazing. <laughs> and other than the restricted section, I think there's only like one, maybe. I think there's one, definitely, mi one mission that requires stealth. And I feel like people are disappointed in that. Like, a lot of people are disappointed that you don't get into trouble for wandering the school at night more often. I disagree. I, I want to explore the castle at night. <laughs> I don't want to get detention every time. That would be so annoying. Like, I'm not... I mean, I'm sure the morality system is going to come up a lot. <laughs> Especially towards the end. <laughs> but I don't really care about the morality system. The lack of it does not bother me, I should say. But it is really cool going into the restricted section because we didn't properly see it in the films. And walking through it for the first time is so... Like, it's so creepy. Like, the, the... The books that are, like, hopping around and... The weird artifacts. Like, what is... This is... Why is this in a school? <laughs> it's so creepy. But I love it. I love it so much. It's still pretty simple, but it's very effective. And because we didn't really see it in the films, it was really nice to be able to have a mission in it really early on. Following the restricted restricted section mission, you go to Herbology and Potions class, and that's when I feel like it's a good opportunity to unlock the flu network in the castle before moving on, because honestly, unlocking the flu network early on in the game anywhere, I think it's a really good idea. Especially the World Flu Network. That's definitely... As soon as you get your broom, as soon as I, I think that's what I did. As soon as I got my broom, that's what I did. Because that becomes really useful later, <laughs> especially when you're, you have missions in the coast or missions in Feldcroft. You can just go And then... And then after that, you are introduced to... Merlin Trials. And, you know what? Merlin Trials are a good idea. Some of them are fun. And they are also used to expand your inventory Rebellion. which is really awesome however <laughs> I don't think there should have been 95 
Merlin trials. <laughs> That's too much. <laughs> that is too much. It takes forever. They take forever. I mean, my previous video, like how long was that to do all of the Merlin trials? That was a long time. <laughs> Um, I mean, if you are a completionist, have fun, good luck. <laughs> but if you are not a completionist, you know, at least do enough Merlin trials to win all of the rewards and expand your inventory to the fullest. I think that would suffice if you're not going for 100%. Oh wait, there is more. There is the uh, the lady that ta tells you about the Merlin trials. She's also LGBT. She's she's a lesbian. <laughs> I forgot about that. So there are two characters representing the LGBT community. <laughs> Too bad Dumbledore is not around this year. One of my favorite gay wizards of all time. <laughs> I, you know what? I said I wasn't going to talk about Fantastic Beasts again, but I do ship Dumbledore and Grindelwald. I think a lot of people said that their relationship was toxic, but it really wasn't. Because their relationship was actually... Wait, oh, that's the boy that gets kidnapped later. Revenia. That was cool. <laughs> um... What was I saying? My ADHD. I don't have ADHD, I'm, s I'm just kidding. But, um, yeah. Because you have to rem- Okay, yeah, Dumbledore and Grindelwald, you have to remember that they had a summer where they fell in love and it was a pretty positive experience for both of them Rebellion. but then the ariana situation happens and that's when they I, that's when they became enemies but they weren't really enemies you know what that, that makes sense now the um the line that grindelwald says at the end of the third movie he says, I was never your enemy. He wasn't lying. I mean, the blood pact kind of... stopped them from attacking each other, so... But Grindelwald was never out to get him. Like, Dumbledore was never his target. At least not until later. Like his whole taking over the world thing, that was not directed at Dumbledore. He wanted Dumbledore by his side to do that. That was his thing. He wanted Dumbledore to be his right hand man as he took over the world. Because it was both of their ideas. Like, Grindelwald did not think of everything on his own. Dumbledore gave him ideas, I'm sure. But Dumbledore was the better person and stopped while he was ahead. Especially given what happened with Ariana. But their relationship was never toxic. I mean, there's definitely more details I'm leaving out, but I don't want to... I'm trying really hard not to not to babble about it because <laughs> it's irrelevant right now. <laughs> but it, it's on my mind, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, was that a floating tree? <laughs> okay. Um 
Yeah, so after you were introduced to the Merlin Trials, that is when you were given the quest that leads you to Jack Daw's ghost. And this is where it diff- this is the house specific mission. The only house specific mission in the game. Gryffindors get to Gryffindors and Hufflepuffs have it the best, I think. <laughs> Gryffindors get to play in the headless hunt in a graveyard Rebellion. in Hogsmeade. And they befriend they befriend nearly headless Nick. They have a purpose of going into the kitchens. Like they have it good, okay? And then Hufflepuffs. Oh my god. They go to Askaban. Like oh my god. It's only a hallway in Azkaban, but it is the coolest hallway in the game. <laughs> it's so... oh my god. That whole sequence... I can't... I, I live-streamed playing this mission and... Uh, I'm kind of glad I, I didn't do commentary. I was actually freaking out. And you can kind of tell because there's a moment... <laughs> there's a moment where I'm just like... Like I am not playing the game. I am... <laughs> I had to take a break because I could not believe what was happening. It was so cool. Oh my gosh. It's so cool. And I'm a Hufflepuff, obviously, so being able to do that Azkaban trip was awesome. It was so awesome. I'm so happy with it. Like, Hufflepuffs definitely had it the best. Like, we were spoiled. We were spoiled. Oh my gosh. Like, first you give us this awesome common room that looks like Hobbit home. <laughs> Rebellion. And then you send us to ask a man. And that cutscene, oh my god, that girl, that lady is so creepy. Get out of here. I was genuinely terrified. Actually, all the prisoners in that hallway are so terrifying. Like the way they talk to you, oh my god. Go watch that video. That is awesome. And I think I it's called Road to Jackdaw or something. All houses. It is so cool. Um, but yeah, Ravenclaws just do a little, a very easy puzzle in the Owlery, which we don't really have to go to the Owlery at all, so that that's nice, I guess. And the Slytherins just meet up with the Headmaster's house elf, and they get a piece of treasure from a cave under the castle. Not as cool. <laughs> Man, though, that, that Azkaban hallway is awesome. Man. I love this game. <laughs> so, after that quest, I ended up doing several missions before doing Jack Daw's Rest. I ended up doing Hecate's second assignment. I think from that you learn Experiomus, which is Harry Potter's favorite spell. I also completed the Crossed Wands, everything. And then I ended up doing a lot of missions that were around Hogwarts. I did Gobs of Gobstones, which I enjoy keeping the cobstones. <laughs> that little girl is so annoying. Um, I did Cash in the Castle, which gives you a really cool jacket or coat, whatever you want to call it. Flying off the shelves, um, a nice little Accio 
easy Accio quest in the library. Venomous Valor is really cool, actually. I think that's... Like, it's a, it's a quick, simple mission, but it takes you to the side gardens and you end up going into a little cavern. And I didn't realize this the first time, but there is a hatch. When you finally get to the room where the venomous tentacula is that you have to collect for the mission, there's a hatch that leads to the greenhouses in that room. I didn't find it the first time around. But it leads you to one of the greenhouse rooms that are locked. And it's just a room. It's just a greenhouse full of venomous tentacula. It's kind of creepy. <laughs> but yeah, I didn't know that. That's really. I thought that was really cool. I also did Card It Away and Lost Astro Blade because those quests are really close to the Girl from Wagadu and the Trials of Merlin quests that I, I did earlier than that. So I went ahead and did those quests while I was at it. And then Ghost of Our Love I did on my way to Jackdaw's Rest because to do the Jackdaw's Rest quest, you have to go to the Forbidden Forest. But because you did the previous Jackdaw mission, you should have been able to find the map for Ghost of Our Love. Um, the Ghost of Our Love map can be found in different places, but they're all... Like, for each house. It's in different places for each house. But if you watch my video on that, you'll see that they can be easily found in the locations where you're doing the house, those house specific missions. Like, like for example, with Gryffindor, the Jackdaw's Rest quest was in the graveyard by Hogsmeade. That's where your Gryffindor can find the map to for Ghost of Our Love. So. I think the Hufflepuff one can be found in a chest in, um, oh my god, what's that village? The village where, um, is it Upper Hogsmeade? I want to say. You have to go there to meet with the lady that takes you to Azkaban. And the chest is in that village, in the center of it, where the shop is. Uh, Ravenclaw is just the, the the map is on top of the Owlry, and Slytherin's easiest to find because it's in a chest. It's in the same room. It's in that little cave that you have to go to, anyways. It's right there. You can't miss it. <laughs> but yeah, Jackdaw's Rest was like our first proper dungeon, I think. Uh, it was definitely hard for me at first because I was still pretty new to the game, but by the time I did it the second or third time, I was pretty much an expert. Um, yeah. Not much to say about that dungeon. I don't really... Oh, jeez. Sorry, I'm getting distracted by my stupidity. Um, anyways... I do think it's cool that the entrance to the dungeon is by the lake in the Forbidden Forest. Um, and you do see a little herd of deer. You see stags. So it's definitely implying that this is where Harry and Sirius were in Prisoner of Azkaban. It definitely has the same vibes. So that was cool. Arnar. Huh. <laughs> <Revenia. laughs> 
is this the dungeon where like I did it right but I still thought I was doing it wrong and I'm sitting here for like forever trying to figure it out oh my god That's the room that the treasure is in, right? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. Rebellion. Yeah, I think I was in the room where the treasure was, but for some reason I didn't think I was. So I spend like I spend the next 10 minutes just like <laughs> Anyways, I'm going to distract you with some commentary. <laughs> so after Jackdaw's rest, you end up getting- or after Jackdaw's rest, you are able to meet with Sebastian. Oh wait, no. Before you meet with Sebastian is flying class, which this is a really good opportunity to talk about flying in this game. It is not good, <laughs> or at first, it is not easy to master. I was not really good at flying at all. I was really bad at it at the start. I looked up how to fix the settings for flying, and that is how I kind of- that really helped me get used to flying a bit. Um, I turned down a bunch of sensitivity settings within like the camera and movement stuff. I would have to look it up again, but it is easy to find. There are really nice people on the internet that know what they're doing. <laughs> so, um... Yeah. Uh... As hard as flying is, the flying class is really fun. Being able to fly around Hogwarts like that... I mean, the music really just completed the moment. It was really magical and really fun. It was really cool. And it makes me really happy. Like that was a moment in the game that made me really happy. I was like, this is it. This is Hogwarts Legacy. And I was having a good time. Even though I was not really good at flying. <laughs> but then after flying, I get even happier because you learn Confringo like right after. You can meet Sebastian in the Undercroft, and he teaches you the best spell in the game. Like, why would anyone use Incendio or Bombarda when you have Confringo? Because Confringo is basically both of those spells. Like, why have either or when you can have Confringo? And you can upgrade it to have, like, it splits off into like two or three other missiles, <laughs> other fire missiles. <laughs> Like, that's so cool. You know what else is cool? The Descending for Sweets quest, which I did after learning Kafrengo. I uh, once you learn how to fly, you're allowed to go to Hogsmeade to the Quidditch shop because the Quidditch shop opens after your first flying class. So that is your time, that's your opportunity to buy your first broom. But I knew that if I did the Descending for Sweets quest, I'd end up in Hogsmeade that way. So I did a, uh, I did kill two birds with one stone there, which I think was really I thought that was a good idea. <laughs> um, yeah, I think it's really cool that Gareth Weasley tells you about the secret passageway. And they made it a little mini dungeon, which they did not have to do. I thought that was really nice. I really... Like, that, that was one of those moments 
when I was playing and I was just very thankful for the game developers. Like it was such a simple dungeon. It wasn't that much, but like they didn't have to make it a whole mini dungeon. You know? They just they were just <sighs> This game is so good. Like that just made me really happy. The fact that we were able to go into this passage at all, honestly, it was so cool. And for Weasley to tell us about it, and then you end up, Rebellion. you end up in the Honeyduke cellar, and oh my gosh, it's that was really cool. That was a really nice touch. And then from there, I got my broom, and then I flew back to Hogwarts to tell Weasley that I got the stuff. <laughs> And then once you have your broom, of course, you can meet with Imelda Reyes, the Slytherin prick, and do the flying test for the first time. Or the, the flying test mission, which introduces you to your first, um, your first, uh, flying race track thing. And these are all really good at helping you get used to flying, I guess. For me, the f doing this first challenge, that's when I realized that I was bad at flying. And that's when I realized I need to do something about it. <laughs> so I did. And I changed the settings. And now here we are. I'm, I'm much better at flying. And I'm better at controlling the mounts that we have in the game as well. So yeah. Yeah, this is so dumb. If you want to know, I do end up going back and I ended up getting the chest. Bro, what am I doing? <laughs> I broke the game. I know the error, error of my ways now. <laughs> So once you have your broom though, I definitely recommend using your broom and going to all the flu powder spots, uh, unlocking the whole flu powder grid in the world. It does make it easier, especially when you have missions down in the coast. Like, you, you can just... You can just go, instead of... Trying to, um... Fly across the world. It's also really helpful because when you do that coastal cavern thing, like, you can just run through it. It's, like, you can... Like, the goblins will try and attack you, but if you just keep running, they won't get you. So you can just unlock that that flu powder there and then go outside and unlock the one there and you have the whole bottom half of the map open to you and that's pretty it's pretty useful <laughs> i must say <laughs> and i do know that i also at some point i decided i don't remember which one it was but when i was unlocking flu powder I also took the opportunity to do the landing platforms at the same time, which is also a good idea. If you want to do that, it's a suggestion. But once you do that, that's when, that's a good time to do the room of requirement, <laughs> which, oh my god, I keep saying that this was really, that this game is really cool, because it is. But I just think it's awesome how you 
kind of discover it. And then you go through the room of hidden things. And it's the only time you get to see the room and that state, so really enjoy it. Take your time with that. Um, there's a few quirky interactions in the room, in that state. And it's just really cool because, like, I mean, you know what ha ends up happening in this room. And that's just kind of cool. I don't know. Like, your, 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 your inner Harry Potter fan just takes the moment to fangirl about being in the room, you know? But yeah, the room requirement, I think, is a really fun part of the game. I didn't think I would enjoy it as much as I did, but uh, I, I do tend to spend more time customizing it than I feel like I originally planned on, you know? Like, I spent a lot more time in the room requirement than I wanted to. My only th complaint is that that side room expands, like, at the end of the game. Like, there's no reason for that, because at that point, you have everything. You don't really need that room anymore. We don't need that expansion. I mean, it would have been really useful earlier, but when you finish the final quest, I mean, maybe if you only did the story stuff and you still had a lot of game to cover to 100% it, sure. But that's not how I play. <laughs> I pretty much saved... I, I think I only saved, like, the final friendship missions for the end. So like Sebastian's finale, Poppy's finale, and Natty's finale, those are the only things I left for after. Which I think is, is reasonable because I think their missions are only unlocked until after the repository, the final repository mission. So I really didn't have a need for their requirement at that point. And I'm like level 39. There's really not much I need. <laughs> However, I will say, I have learned some things. If you want some tips about the room of requirement, here you are, here you go. So, hopping pots. Get those instead of brewing your own. Um, I think you have to brew your own for the, for like a, a trophy. But other than that, there's no need. Just get hopping pots, and you're good to go. <laughs> you can have three in a room at a time, and each produces a random potion. I mean, if, unless you want to stock up on a very specific potion, I don't see why you wouldn't just use hopping pots. And in terms of plants, I recommend getting the three medium plants and filling those with your small and medium plants and then having the um the one large plant holder for your two large plants so the three three pot the three medium pot thing and then the one large pot thing and you can have a nice setup um I definitely recommend only doing one of each plant, maybe. Except when you are stocking up on Mallow Sweet. Before you plant anything else, you get those 90 Mallow Sweet leaves immediately. Get them at the start of the game. It's really easy. If you have those, if you have the three pots of for medium plants, you can have nine mallow sweet leaves and you can get what is it? You can get like I think each mallow sweet plant gives you five leaves. So you can stock up 
your 90 Malakut leaves very easily. Do that at the start of the game before you do any other plant. Like your herbology area needs to just be Malasweet <laughs> at the start. So that as you play through the game, you just have them on hand. Whether you want to do the Merlin Trials all at once or throughout the game, you will at least have the Malasweet leaves on deck. That's a very important pro tip. <laughs> After the requirement, um, you know, go ahead and do Percival Rackham's trial. Uh, that's... I'm trying to remember. It's an easy trial. It's one of the easier ones, right? I think Brookwoods was the one that I was most confused on. If I remember correctly. Yeah. Thunder Brew is my favorite potion in the game, by the way. <laughs> so overpowered. After Professor Rackham's trial, uh, time for a beasts class, which is cute. You finally meet Poppy, and you have the opportunity to meet a hippogriff. Really fun. Really nice callback. I mean, I really like that hippogriffs are in this game, honestly. They're my favorite, some of my favorite creatures in this game. Or my favorite creatures in general. Um, I also take the opportunity to do Sharp's first assignment, to learn Depulso. Uh, Depulso is a spell that I was kind of, like, neutral about, but over time Depulso became one of my favorite spells. And then, I think at that point, the, uh, caretaker What's his face? I think calls upon you to figure out what those demigod statues are all about. And here's another pro tip. After the initial demigod quest, go ahead and do what it takes immediately to unlock level 3 locks. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I think the Alohomara walks were like, like, they were good on paper, but I don't know, you do so many, you kind of get tired of them. So, I would definitely just change the difficulty to story for a bit and find all the demiguy statues. Most of them are pretty easy to find, actually. Um, I can't think of one that was like particularly difficult, really. Maybe a bit of a hassle because you got to go all over the place. But yeah, I should investigate definitely get those out of the way 
I also went ahead and did arithmancy doors right after, which give you a lot of collectibles. Um, I don't see why you would wait to do those. It is a math... It's a math game. <laughs> the creatures on the door represent the numbers 0 through 9, and you're just playing like Sudoku or something. So they're pretty easy. Um, yeah, I think you just get... It's kind of like the butterflies, you get about a lot of furniture and wand handles and clothes. Which, I will say, it's not a bad idea to get as many, as much gear as possible early on because you can sell it um, before you start catching magical creatures. Selling gear is the best way to make money at the start of the game. Um, I think legendary gear is not common at first. You get a lot of other ones, but if it's, I think, purple and orange, that's the way to go. Sell all the blues and greens. <laughs> yeah. I think there's some things with scaling in terms of when you get here, but it really doesn't matter. I, because after you get to level 20 and you have all those, those talent points used and you know, if you've done other things in the game to power up, it doesn't matter what your gear is. Um, also, if you were unaware, because it took me a while to realize this, well not a while, but I didn't know this at first, but you can change your appearance. There is a big difference between gear and appearances. Gear is like... The gear is the robes and stuff that you wear that give you the stats. But the you can change the appearance so that you don't look like a buffoon. <laughs> you can actually coordinate you your appearance now? instead of walking around with those dragon eyes and stupid hats, you know? You can actually make yourself look good. And... This is where you can find a lot of- like, there are a lot of appearances that you earn, but like, you might go into your inventory and you'll be like, oh, where are they? They're not gear, they're appearances. So you gotta change your appearance to get access to those things. Like, the DLC appearances, you don't- they're not in your gear inventory. <laughs> and that's how I found out that you had to, um, like, gear and appearances were different things. Uh, it's definitely not hard to figure out, but yeah, I think a lot of people Rebellion. don't know about that. Or not enough people know about it. They don't exactly tell you in the game. You kind of have to figure it out or look it up. But after Arithmancy Doors, I went ahead and I did like a, a moth to a frame and I began the ultimate exploration of Hogwarts and Hogsmeade and I found every field guide page ever. I think I'm only missing two in Hogsmeade but I definitely have all of the Hogwarts ones. <laughs> Whew. Yeah. N having Alohomora complete is crucial for this. <laughs> you need to know all of the Alohomoras to do this. So, yeah. And that levels you up a lot. I think I leveled up like six I'm times finding these pages because I did them so early in the game Alohomora. and I was at a point where the pages were just buffing me up a lot. Like, I started at level 12 or something, and I ended up level 19 or 20. So yeah. Uh, and while I was at it, I think the next time I played after, I did all of the ancient magic hotspots, which are not hard. They're pretty easy. I think there are, there are a couple of locations that are kind of... 
like not straightforward. But there's only 20. Most of them, I think all but two showed up on the map for me. I did use a guide just to find the locations, but I solved them all on my own. And once you find all of them and you get all five slots for Ancient Magic, I mean, there's no one stopping you. <laughs> After all that exploration, I did get back on track with these quests. I did the Helm of Earth Talk and the Shadow of the Estate, which... I don't know, I don't think I have much to say about those missions. You do get more of Sebastian's story in Shadow of the Estate. Uh, you meet the family, essentially, and uh, yeah. That's the real beginning of that story, which I will definitely be talking about a lot more in the future because I do believe Sebastian's story is one of the strongest in the game. Actually, the strongest in the game. I would watch a whole movie about Sebastian. But once you do, th do those missions, the a lot of assignments are unlocked from there. You can do both of Kagawa's assignments. You can do both of Garlic's assignments. You can do Professor Onai's assignment. And you can do Sharp's last assignment. So, Kagawa teaches you Glacius and I think Arresto Momentum, which Glacius is a really great spell, especially when you upgrade it and you have that Ice Blast, which I think you, you might have seen me use throughout this very long video. <laughs> And Aristo Momentum is good for some puzzles, but I normally, I usually don't use it a lot. It's not really useful other than, like, the occasional puzzle that calls for it. Uh, Sharp teaches us Defendo, which is one of my favorite spells. Um, yeah, Depulso and Defendo was given to us by Sharp. Good man. <laughs> Professor Onai teaches us Descendo, which I've seen people enjoy using, but it's like, I don't find any use for it when I have so many other things. <laughs> um, and Professor Garlic teaches you Wingardium Leviosa and Filipendo. So I only use Filipendo for the Merlin Trials. And then after that, I never use it again. I just... I don't know. I just don't use it. And Wingardium Leviosa is not a spell you have to equip at all. Because once you have it, Accio becomes upgraded. <laughs> like... Yeah, Accio. You use Accio, and depending on... The angles and how you're moving around. Oh, Accio that. becomes Wingardium Leviosa. So you never have to equip that spell. It's technically useless, but completing the quest and learning the spell itself is useful. <laughs> it is a nice upgrade, especially during some puzzles, um, like it, it does have its need. I probably use it more than Flipendo and Arresto Memento. Momentum. After that, I did Sweeping the Competition, um, which is the flying course in Feldcroft. I think it goes all around Feldcroft, so that's pretty cool. Um, I think this is. Like, it's a little harder than the first one, but I will say that the third one that we end up doing later... Yeah, that... Yeah, good luck trying to get top score on that. <laughs> I 
And then, you know, I think that's when I did all the balloon challenges. Another easy collectible quest. Um, I like doing that early on because I just... Ugh, the balloons kind of take away the immersion, so I don't mind doing those all at once at this point in the game. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's so dumb seeing these floating balloons in the background. I just get rid of them as soon as possible. I, I think I wait for Kogawa's assignments and then I do the rest. But yeah. I also recommend doing the eye chests after this. The first one is... I think the first one you encounter is in the restricted section. And then the other ones are all over Hogwarts and Hogsmeade. Each of the chests has 500 galleons. And if you find all of them early, I believe there's like... You can get like 14,000 galleons by finding all of the chests. If I remember correctly. But yeah, that's a lot of galleons early on. And you kind of need galleons the first act of the game. So it's a good idea to find them and you need the illusionment charm to open them. Uh, so, yeah. And I, you, oh, you also need a rest of momentum because one of the eye chests is in the clock tower, and you need to use a rest of momentum on the clock itself to open a door that has an eye chest. So. Yeah, definitely wait until you do Kogawa's second assignment. But yeah, after that, the, the fall assignments are really pinnacle. <laughs> I recommend not doing any of the Merlin Trials until you have all of the core spells, <laughs> all of the main spells. Because you need Flipendo, you need Confringo, Depulso. What else do you need? I think those are the main ones that you need. Um, yeah. But yeah, the Marlin trials take forever. I think my video for that for the Merlin Trials was like four hours. It's so... it takes such a long time to get all 95. Um, if you're not a completionist, I feel like I've, I said this earlier, if you're not a completionist, just do the amount you need to max out your inventory. Um, and if you are a completionist, uh, you know, put on some good music and have at it. <laughs> I love walking around here. I love this area. Oh, that is so satisfying seeing those signs. <laughs> well, I think I'll hang out here a bit more, but I've pretty much talked about everything. Every video up until now, I've kind of touched on. This is cool, though. I think this is the first time I went to Hogsmeade Station. Rebellia.
I don't know if I stay around until the daytime, but during the day, there's a bunch of people here. There's some kids doing the, um... Uh... Oh, what do you call it? Hopscotch. Magic hopscotch. A couple of kids playing with toy brooms as well. It's a fun little spot. Ah, oh, that's so cool! That's thumbnail worthy, right? <laughs> I think there's a couple of Merlin trials back there. Of course, they're already done. This is awesome. Rebellion. It's really satisfying visiting locations in the game that look just like the movies because... Like, I feel like most Harry Potter fans are more familiar with the movies than the books. And the movies, they just... Like, the movie locations are just more recognizable because, you know, they're movies. I do love the fact that they... there are... Like, the book... The books were used for many details and locations and stuff. But it just, it's different seeing things that we're familiar with because of the movie. I think you get, you understand. <laughs> it just hits different. Like there's a hallway in, in Hogwarts where the little potion closet is. And it's, that's where the scene a scene from Goblet of Fire takes place there. Where, you know, Snape is like, don't lie to me. That scene. <laughs> I do wonder where the Whomping Willow ends up. Because obviously it's not planted until Lupin starts attending, but he spent on these grounds since before you were born. Like, it would be near the groundskeeper hut, right? I mean, it wasn't really in the same place in the movies either. Because <laughs> they changed filming locations between Chamber of Secrets and Prisoner of Azkaban, so it was in two different places in both movies. I love these. I love these little dragon tapiaries. They're so cool. Bro, look! 51 out of 55. Field guide pages. Where are they? I used a guide to find the 51. But where are the other four? Did I just use the wrong guide? <laughs> My gosh, that's so annoying. Ugh. I don't know where they are. Please tell me if you know where they are. <laughs> this is so annoying. <laughs> Am I trying to look for pages? Rebellion. I'm desperate. I do know that I got- I ended up getting all of the Revelio pages. And I think I got all of the mirror pages. So what's left? Flying pages? Right? Are they, like, at the edge of Hogsmeade? I don't know. I'm so angry. Oh my goodness, is this my opportunity to raid Hogsmeade? And 
am am I doing am I committing mass burglary right now in Hogsmeade? Pages. I love. Okay, I love Hogsmeade during the fall. The Halloween vibes, just. I love it. Rebellion. Yep, I'm... I'm raiding Hogsmeade.
Come on in. Healing potions are a speciality here, should you need any. What can I do for you today? Hope to see you again. Farewell for now. I wish I paid more attention. Rebellion. My first employment was at Honeydukes. Ravenia! more. Revenia.
Nora. You're worrying far too much. Nobody's looking at you. Look at that boy. Revelio. I'm just trying to practice. Alohomora. Rebellion. I'll fix him, that charm grinder. <laughs> Alohomora. Rebellion.
handy resource indeed, your field guide. I'm most pleased to be included. Revelio. It might seem like harmless fun. I thought when you just had your hair done. Like lazy, wouldn't pick up my food. Alohomora. Nothing warms a body like in the That's the voice actor, or that voice actor is the, um, the dude that played Lee Jordan in the films. It's really cool. I think it would have been cool if some other actors came for this game, but, you know, it's fine. It's whatever.
<laughs> Hello. <laughs> Sorry. <sighs> Let's go into Hogs Honey Dukes. Yo. Mm -mm 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 -mm. This is so much fun. Yeah, I'm definitely, yeah. Anyways, with that, um, there's definitely a bit more exploration in this video. I think it's close to an hour more, but I've talked about every, like I've kind of went through the list of videos I made until this one and just kind of brought up a few things. I said what I wanted to say, and I don't think I can say anything to milk <laughs> the, the, like, the rest of the duration of this video. So if you've been watching Runal Waslib's guides, I hope you enjoy them, or I hope you find them useful. Um, I know I'm a little late to the party, honestly. There's so many other uh, tutorials on YouTube. And that's- I don't care if you watch those instead, but these videos were fun for me to make. Um, and I just really wanted to do something fun with my Runal Waslib character. And I figured, you know, why not make Waslib guides? You know? Why not? Um... Yeah. I definitely enjoy this game, and I enjoyed playing as Waslib. They're a fun character. I have had, I just had a lot of fun with this character. <laughs> but yeah, so look forward to more. Uh, definitely have a lot of videos scheduled out. <laughs> There's a lot coming. I'm pretty much completing the game, so. At this point in time, I did finish Runel's save. I think I'm leaving... Like, there's only a few things left to do with Runel Waslib, which I think I'm gonna save for live streams. Maybe a live stream or two once the... Um, once the all of Runel's journey is uploaded, I'll probably do a live stream or two to really 100% it. Um, also, I do think there are field guide pages Rebellion. in the the beast shop, but I still there's not four in there, so I'm still missing some. Whatever. Um. Maybe that'll be something to do in those live streams. <laughs> so yeah, thank you for watching. Um, if, I don't know if you've watched this whole video, but if you did, you're cool, I guess. <laughs> uh, yeah, so enjoy the rest of this video without commentary. You can watch the exploration in peace. And uh, yeah, until the next treasure hunting video, I'll talk to you guys later. Like, subscribe, all that stuff. Okay. Bye. <laughs>
there you are. Admiral Drake. Rebellion. 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 Rebellion.
Ravenia. I would say that Irondale is not appropriately named. Abandoned long ago, no doubt. This could prove dangerous if I'm not careful. Alohomora.
Revelio. Bardo Beaumont should have returned by now. Had by dark wizards he was. Terrorized by Ramrock's royalists. It's not right. Why, if it isn't my most generous man, this remarkable thing was called an accordion. <laughs> Look at it go! Rebellion. Revelio. Rebellion.
Revenia. Aurora. This looks intriguing. more. Revelio. Revenia. Huh. 
Revelio.
Any who oppose me. Someone's here. Someone's been taken out. Oh, Rebellion. for you to learn the error of your ways.
is the student from the town. Revenia. 